And hello, how's everybody doing today? Doing good? The week's going well so far? Mine's been pretty good. Busy with a little bit of uh, meetings and such. Sorry for having to stream a little bit, but such is life. Got to continue to pay the bills. So, welcome on in, everybody. I wanted to bring everybody back together today and talk to you about my experience after we got the MMU2 installed, MMU2S installed on my Prusa Mark 3S Bear. This is 100% self sourced. Um, or, excuse me, let me rephrase that. This was a Fisetic based uh, Prusa clone kit that I bought secondhand from another individual. Um, all the parts you see here, for the most part, were printed in purple ABS. It was eSun uh, ABS Plus purple. There's a few pet G parts that are on it. That's why they're not the same shade. Actual controller case, front screen. But, you know, that, that's just the way it was. Need to get some parts printed and didn't need to fire up the ABS printer to do it or it was otherwise test. So, last stream, just to go through everything. We mounted our MMU unit, MMU2S unit, and we had already, I had already mounted the buffer system here. This is a knockoff or a clone of the RMU3 unit. This is an open source version. And what this allows you to do is there's two different paths that you can put it this piece up here that opens up um, the one that I am using is a side load so that means my five filaments would come in left side of the machine come in do a full loop around the idler wheels that are in the unit and then come out of the tubes and come into the back there's another version where the filaments come in here at the back. It basically just makes a U around the idler wheels. And in that version, you can either have your spools coming in from the right of the machine, coming up and over, or if your spools are mounted above the machine, you can have them come in, then go. Um, my initial plan and in thinking is that this machine will go back where it came from. Uh, I will take the dragon down, I will put purple haze back up here. And then right down here, there's a Prusa Mini here that I need to get back to West Free One. And I will put one of my rep boxes sideways or lengthways underneath here and feed them out the top of the rep box up and into the or a view unit. Hey, Stephen Poole, how's everything going today? How are you doing this fine day? I think everybody's just trickling in, and I'm just trying to go over kind of what we did last stream and what my goals are for this long term. So as I was mentioning, there were there were really two options. Um, one would be to put the machine here. Over here, uh, let me see if I can't move this and pan and tilt this a bit. Unlock it. Okay, so there's a couple of options because I've got the slant ceiling here, really doesn't. Uh, it's really not advantageous for me to run an RMU or spools from on high. Oh, your assembly, is that your, uh, like your Mecha King Kong that you were doing, Stephen Poole? So, one of my thoughts was to set the pressure here and run it 
front to back where the back side of the printer would be up against this long wall here. I could offset and hang the rep wrap box come right down into it. Another option is take this, move it, and put it up against the wall. And that way I could potentially have a high low setup with some rep wrap. Able to feed two different printers uh, that would have that would have an MMU or other type of material. But I think for now, plan is we will move Purple Haze back over here where Blue Dragon is. Like I said, I will put the rut box underneath right here beneath. I'll feed up through the top into the side mounted RMU buffer system come in. And I will say that this buffer system has worked great. Um, I had my worries. All buffer systems have some potential downsides. Um, I will tell you that the prints, I'll show you the prints that um, these prints were well over a day in length. I think it's, oh, look at the part. Yeah, so it was about 28 hours, a little more than 28 hours for these two to print because of all the tool changes. Um, didn't read anything on that. We'll change it. Let me see. He could. I think it would. Up in the top. So it doesn't actually say how many tool changes, you know, in the actual file. Kind of depressing. We'll have to make note of those. Um, there was a lot. I'll tell you that. Yeah. So whenever you do like a two in one out, um, those get. A little more difficult to use than than the MMUs, from my understanding. Um, hey, Cedar Craft, how's it going, my friend? How's it going? I've been waiting for you to actually join our stream. So, just a heads up, there may be some prints going on. I believe we did agree that the. Uh, hey, Poon Dog, how are you doing? I believe we did agree that white was the main color and purple was going to be the accent. So, went ahead and I'm printing the stealth burner stuff just in case so you have a great path down the road. I'll have those parts done. And then, thanks to Osita Craft, I also. It's going to be awesome. See if. Better designed this for me. So this will go on Red Dragon. And I had to send him a different uh, main body for the Stealth Burner fan shroud because the body I'm using on Blue Dragon is slightly different um, in order to work with LGX Lite and the boards that I have. 
So I did send that file over to him so he can make me one as well. Yep, and, and like I said, take your time with Cedarcraft, no big deal, but I, I will add this to um, Red Dragon back here. We'll go over here soon. And then as soon as I can get that file and get some other pressing prints off my main printer, I will print that up. Um, thanks to the Cedarcraft. So yeah. Um, so the setup that I have here at the moment, and I'm probably going to drop this back down just, just a little bit. Okay. Is four spools, right? Not enough room on the on the bench top right here to get all five on. But I've got four spools lined up. I've got the blue, the black that we started with, and my first print was off of. I've also got um, Jesse Overcast Gray PLA, and I just loaded up a uh, a white silk, and that's for a a print. I just got a request for another dragon from my friend back in Colorado. Actually, his daughter got on the phone and requested um, another one. So I was like, no problem, we can get you another one. Ow, 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 so I'm going to print her another one in a different color. So what are you up to, Poondog? What are you up to, Acetacraft? Anything going on today? I know uh, Stephen Poole said he's working on his King Kong and assembling that. It's going to have to be a lot of fun. But anyhow, there were a lot. And, and I might actually just load this back up. Um, but I did print another file that I wanted to try and start. This is the next file I'm going to do is a new LCD cover. It's just going to be three colors. Going to use the gray as the primary color and blue and black as some of the accent colors on the MMUS. Prusa uh, screen. It's it's the LCD, so it'd be like original Prusa in black, and then I think in the MMU 2S on the side will be the blue set up right now. And I just wanted to get that started and, and roll through and show you some of what. Now, one of the things that I do need to do for the white, since I didn't have anything loaded in that lane before was I do need to calibrate the lane length. So when I first started doing this, I was having a lot of problems. And I was I went and watched a couple of videos by um, Chris Riley on YouTube. And there is a secret menu that you can get into on the MMU when you first initially start it up. Um, the printer has to be off. You press and hold the middle button on the MMU unit, and then um, turn the printer on. And as it goes through its initial cycle, um, it will go into the special menu where you'll have both the first and fifth lane lights lit up. Then you'll hit the left button and then the middle button again, and it will come over to the first lane position. And it will, um, extrude or push the filament from the MMU down into your hot end. And what I have to do is take this door off. Um, you have to take this door off because you need to see where the filament lines up with on the actual gears. And what I was having was it was shooting way past the gears which would then mean that it would try and jam too much filament through um, when it was starting to print and would cause this big blob on it. Um, and so what you do when you get in that menu is using the right button, it retracts the filament, and the left button um, extrudes, quote unquote, filament, pushes it forward. And you always want to end with a downward movement. 
what you would do is you'd push the right button to bring that filament up past the gear back into the top of the extruder, and then go to the left button, move it back down, and once it gets right to where the two um, the two gears should be meshing on it, that's where you want it. You push the middle button again, and it saves it, and it does a retry. And then if you hold that button, the middle button for a two count again, it will go through and it'll um, push that filament forward to the tool head again. And all you're doing now is just verifying it goes back to the right position. And once you have that done, and you hit the middle button and you're good, then you would hit the right button again, and it'll move to the next lane. You just do that over and over, and you do that for all five lanes. Now, once you get it done, you should be good, but if you have a lane that gets problematic, it's probably because you're using a different filament or a different filament manufacturer, and you have a different level of tension or whatever that's being applied so you may have to redo that lane calibration again but once i did that i kicked this print back off and it went um, i did kick this print off it looked like it was going good i went to bed i woke up in the morning and the bed was clear meaning it threw everything off the plate and i had a blob forming on this which really, really scared me because this has a Remo in it. And I wound up um, having to heat it up. I got the blob off, but I wound up having to heat it up and use this indented part of my pliers to be able to get a grip all the way around the nozzle to remove it. Because what had happened was I started getting filament up some kind of where that heat breaky area is and I had to basically really work on on working it out once I got that out um I was able to while it was still warm clean all the filament off around the actual break portion of the nozzle and then I put it back in and for good measure I heated it back up and used my um, plastic pusher tool, or the plastic plow tool, and went straight down, and that got any potential clog that was in that um, the not or the throat of that nozzle out, and I went back, calibrated the lanes. Got everything right. Okay, learn. Let me step back one second. The reason I got that blob and this did not, um, I'll say stop and go into a wait mode was because I have crash detection turned on. Okay. Um, I was having some issues with oversensitivity with crash detection. So I turned crash detection off. If I hadn't turned that off, I wouldn't have got that blob because as soon as it started knocking things off the build plate, it would have tried to correct and problem would have been solved. Um, but I restarted that print yesterday and I sit right over here, um, right next to this desk um, and work all day. So I was sitting here watching it, listening to it, listening to it do its filament changes and not once did it have an issue so that's good i'm getting really good tips i'm not getting any stringing tips on these so that's good as well that's another issue um so that was really the two things is making sure that i calibrated the lane distance and once i got that lane distance right i was pretty good to go um it didn't have any problems since then. um the filament sensor has been working great i had a little bit of issue with that so i did re need to recalibrate this filament sensor but once i got that it's 
haven't had any trips. And in fact, on this print, which was once again 28 hours, um, if I come in here to the um, fail stats for the MMU, on the last print, which once again, 28 hours, there was zero MMU fails, and there was three load fails. In which case, it tried to load, it didn't, didn't go right, so it came back and tried to do an auto -correct. And it, it must have solved it because I am not seeing any little ends. So with the latest revision of the MMU2S, with the latest software, it will attempt that if the if it's having issues loading after three failed attempts, it will cut the tip off of that filament, that the filament that's loaded in that lane, to ensure that it gets a um, nice sharp tip. So I at that part the print had been going for well over 12 hours and hadn't had any issues. So I did go to sleep. I will tell you, I woke up in the middle of the night, sort of quasi panicked because I'm like, something must be wrong. And I ran up here and everything was working fine. So I went back to bed. So yeah, but I will pop these off because the bed's nice and cool. So it should pop off rather easily. These are the Flexi Factory gnomes, and as you can see, everything moves just fine. Got the little bunny slippers. This would be the female one. She's got the basket. Got the little Flexi Factory logo that came out well. And the little dude, same way. His little Flexi Factory logo came out well. So all in all, other than the fact that black and blue for Easter gnomes, probably not the best choice of colors. But like I said, I grabbed the, the two most readily available colors that were right underneath the pitch. Um, and what I do want to work on Popping this off. Now, here's the thing. You will get a lot of purge material. Um, you're, if you can do multiple prints, um, they don't even have to be the same uh, design. You can have multiple prints on here. But the more prints that you have on there, less waste to printed item you will have. I will tell you that this is a fairly, well, it's a fairly stout block, but it does have some parse infill there. There's a little bit of sparse infill there. But I mean, let me see if you can hear this. Right? Um, will that MMU work on any printer? So this MMU unit is a Fisetic, um, I was going to say clone, it's, it technically isn't a clone. This is a Fisetic based kit um, because the MMU is uh, open source, right? And so it, this is open source. What happened was I got the this particular printer itself from Misha Harsberger, um, who is normally over in Modbot streams. And she was having all kinds of issues with it, and she was just kind of fed up and, and wanted to part ways with it. So I said, hey, no problem, I'll take it. And I got the printer. This printer has worked awesome. This is my first time using one of the satin sheets. And this thing is amazing. Like, I am seriously thinking of buying a couple of more of these um, and throwing them on my other pieces. 
I love this to death. And it works for just about every material without having to do anything special to it. Um, this also has a Revo uh, 6 hot end. That is the way it came. So I reprinted all the parts in ABS. Did my standard, since they're designed for PET G, I, uh, when I sliced them, I made every part 100.5%, so 0.5% larger in all three dimensions. And that seems to work well. And everything printed nicely, everything went together nicely. This is the bare 2.0 frame versus the 2.1 frame that I have on um, Black Bear. And so I decided, okay, well, this is a Fizetic machine. Let me go ahead and get the Fizetic MMU. And it, it's really putting it together is not hard. Um, yeah, so the big thing with this one, Stephen, is it's a Marlin based machine. So you will um, get the hex code for this from Prusa, and you flash um, code onto this controller board. Um, I would say there shouldn't be any reason why you can't make this work with any other printer, especially if it's running Marlin. Um, you just need to know how to hook it up to that particular controller board. Um, yeah, so all in all, I would have to say I really like how this unit turned out once I got some of the calibration stuff, which I knew that was going to be the biggest issue. It wasn't the build because I built way too many printers and other stuff. So the build wasn't daunting for me. And the Prusa manuals, I think, are top notch. And that's one of the things that they alluded to about the XL coming out was you make a minor change seemingly, whether that's something to the software, the slicer, or whatnot. And Bruce is really good about going in and changing all the manuals. Well, so the manual you get initially, which is a printed manual, would work for your machine. And it has all the latest revisions. So that's great. But this unit, I want to say I bought it off by Zenic. I bought this off AliExpress. And I, I can't remember which particular vendor or if it was through Fizetic store directly, it probably was. Um, and I would probably say it was around the mark. Get the unit from uh, Prusa. I think it's a couple hundred dollars if you get it pre-assembled. Like I said, the assembly really isn't that. It's really, um, and it goes together well. What I, what I do want to do, though, is go ahead and I'm going to get the next print started. And this is going to be a three color. And once again, it's going to use the gray, which are gray and then the black and the blue. Now you do notice that I've got the plastic clips on my spool holders because these, these standard um, spool rollers that come with the MMU kit, I don't like it. And the cardboard did not roll well at all. So I, I went ahead and put the plastic clips on them so that it would roll on the clip versus the cardboard and have excuse me, less friction. Right now, everything's heating up. The, you know, just watching this progress, you know, the progress of that print. I mean, it was, it was awesome seeing it. Hey, Royal Nomi, how are you doing? Um, I think I showed these on or on Twitch, but I waited and I popped this off 
the build plate as I started the stream. Once again, black and blue is probably not the best colors for Easter, but these turned out amazing. Like standard Prusa quality. So we even have the FF on the feet. And the little bunnies came out awesome. Bunny slippers. What was really creepy was watching the ears print. And I don't know why. I, don't, I think it was the angle that they were printing. It just looked really wonky and weird, but it was cool way. But the there was a little bit of tuning that we had to do on the on the MMU. I was telling everybody the um oh so real fast before this gets started here. So there's our female and there's our male. They printed at the same time. And this is my overall purge block for those two. So all in all, um, what I was reading is you're going to have a purge block regardless so oopsies um if you can add you know make it a full plate um or add more than one thing because if you print if i print like one of those i would still have a purge block this size so and then i would have printed the other one and i would have had another purge this size and this is waste for the most part Right, so by doing multiples, you reduce the overall amount of plastic waste. Now, I have seen people that are taking these and recycling them. And basically, the, the gist of what I've seen is they break them down, grind them down, and then uh, bake them, basically. And bake them out and pull them into a single, like, big sheet. And then they can do other things with those sheets, whether it's, you know, cut other designs or do something. But the purge on this, so normally on a, on a standard Prusa, the purge is like that long. But it does a full, it comes over, does a bit, comes back, and then comes over and goes the full length and back as part of the purge. So the first purge line's pretty good, just to make sure that that, um, Hey, Western One, how you doing, sis? Just to make sure that the that whatever color was in the nozzle last is purged out of that nozzle. All right, so you're gonna have to give me a second. I gotta bend down and grab the one that just dropped. Boy, and I gotta show this to my to my sister from another mister. So. My first MMU print, well, I should say successful. The FF for Flexi Factory came out real nice. The bunny slippers came out really nice. And the baskets all came out. So the MMU file does both at the same time. I'm not sure if the regular file does both at the same time, but they did print both at the same time. And I'm really happy with them. Like I said, the, there, there probably could have been better color selection for it, but I just reached down and grabbed whatever I had close at hand when I was starting the stream, or running the stream today. Oh yeah, those slippers are really, really cute. And doing them in multicolor is awesome. So what you'll see here is it's the MMU2S and the X. So what I'm doing is printing a multicolor version of the LCD display. And it's going to do the MMU2S and the X, which is for the reset button in blue it's going to do um the original prusa portion in black and then everything else will be gray 
Oh yeah, Westry. It's how what's the weather there? Like how cold is it there? Because we got down to freezing last night. And right now it's 45 degrees and sunny, but we're supposed to have freezing temperatures the next two nights as well. So it's supposed to get down to 28 tonight and then 29 um, what, tomorrow night, Thursday morning. So we actually have to go and pull our uh, blueberry bushes in since we haven't um, actually planted them in the ground yet. If we had planted them in the ground, we'd have to go and wrap them up in blankets to try and save them. But yeah. The Westry, I, I did, I say I will say almost bork. I, I was really, really worried. Um, so after the stream Sunday, I got the files for the gnomes set up and I had them start printing. And it was going good, been going for a couple hours good, no problems. So I went ahead and went to bed. Woke up Monday morning, and the first thing I did was come upstairs to check on the print. And as I came up, I saw there was nothing on the build plate. I was hearing a scratching sound, which is scary. Um, luckily, the nozzle wasn't scratching on the plate. It was plastic, because I had to blob from hell on this button. Back. This was the blob that was on the hot end, right? And don't know if you can tell, but that is a pretty deep hole, right? So it was still warm, so I was able to. So raise the, you know, I stopped the print, raise the uh, Z axis up, and pulled this off, and then spent a while cleaning this up Monday morning, and I got it all cleaned up. Luckily, now in order to get the nozzle out, because I had um, So this little small break right here, I had filament all the way up to there. This, this top washer-like piece is what seals the throat into the Revo hot end. So I had filament all the way up here, so as it was cooling down, it was sticking. So I had to heat the nozzle up, and then I used this section of my pliers to get around the head fully and start working it loose. And I had to do it hot because of the plastic, right? So I got it down most of the way, got this off, and then immediately grabbed some tweezers and started picking the plastic off around that piece, which came off great. And it's all clear. Um, I did this. This is a different one. This is the one that came with printer when I, when I bought it. Um, but like this, the silicone socks clean, but I didn't break the silicone socks. So I need to order some of these just to have the replacements for it. Um, but no harm, no foul. Got it cleaned out. Um, made sure there was no jam in there. And I, I was going to say started to start the print over, but I didn't actually start the print over. What I did was went in and revalidated my lanes. So I started watching some YouTube videos, and Chris Riley explains this, that there is a, a secret menu in the MMU unit. Here, let me uh, let this up. That one up and I'll lift this just so there's a secret menu on the MMU unit. There's three buttons up here. 
There's a right, a left, or a middle, left, middle, and right. So what you would do is hold, press and hold the middle button down as you're turning on the printer. And once it goes through its, its boot up sequence, the first and fifth channel lights will light up. That tells you you're in that secret mix. They push the left button and then the middle button, and it does a homing sequence and goes to the first lane. And then it will load the filament down into the extruder. You froze to death? Yeah, I, I tried not to go outside today. Like I walked out, I walked right up to the front door. I looked out, it was bright and sunny. And I looked down at my watch and it said it was 42 degrees. And I was like, yep, I'm not going outside. Doesn't matter how sunny it is. And I turned around and went back up. Soon. You got yelled at by a parent? Okay, so what did you do to the kid that was being a jerk, though, that got you yelled at by the parent? I'll ask you that. Or was the kid a, a baby goat? You got yelled at by the mama goat. Yeah, that, that was a fun blob. It was really disconcerting. Um, but it came off really easy. I, you know, I've had some gnarly, gnarly blobs. And probably the most fun was I had an Ender 3 blob that had actually stopped the hot end fan because it blobbed into the hot end fan. Um, so needless to say, I just... Take off the hot end fan. Put a new one on there. But yeah, I mean, this is a pretty gnarly blob. I had thrown away. I'm probably going to keep it. It's actually pretty cool. Like a little lark. Um, but what that uh, secret menu allows you to do is calibrate the distance from when it trips the Finda probe, filament probe up here to where it comes down to in the hot end. And so if it goes past the gears in the hot end, now they're both spinning at the same time because when you do a load from here, the gears in the extruder will start spinning as well. And basically you grind the filament up. So I was having some issues there. So once I calibrated that, which the first one was shooting like way down, it was almost to the bottom of the hot end, um, which means as it tries to do its initial purge, it's puddling right here in the corner, um, which was bad. Um, so once I got that calibrated and you get it right, so you will go, the right button will move the filament back up towards the MMU. The left button will push it down. You always want to end with a down movement. So you actually pull it up past where you want it to be, go back down, and you want it just where you would see the two um, gears starting to mesh. Um, visually, you know, where you would visualize that mesh at, and then that would be good. And you'd hit the middle button, and it would retract the filament back to the load position. Um, and then I would do, I'd hit the middle button again to validate it. And if I needed to, I'd adjust it again and then save it. And once it was going there reliably, then you'd hit the middle button, it would retract back up, save that length setting, and then you would hit the right button, which would move it to the next lane. So you would do that for each lane. And then when you were all done, you just keep going to the right until it, it hits the home position and I believe it's a long press of the middle button to save it. Uh oh, you got a clog on the go. Ugh. Yeah, the, the part that I hate is when I get a clog, but it's somewhere between so so like here it's all one assembly with the extruder and the hot end. So there's like 
that much room between the extruder and hot end. And normally I've never had to take this all the way down to try and get stuff out of a PTFE tube. But on the Ender 3 over here in the corner, ah, that one, the Ender 3 over here in the corner, I do have a longer amount of PTFE tube between the Micro Swiss all metal hot end and the Sherpa Mini extruder on it. And I, yeah, I've had some nightmares with that one. Oof. Oh, wow. Okay. And have you tried to, like, do you have a plastic plow or something that you could try and push from the top down um, with it heated up? Or have you tried the needle up from the bottom? Underpaid people in graduate. Oh, that's awesome. And the, and the fact that Westry is, you know, studying for the bar right now. And the fact that she's on here means she's not studying. And I would yell at her, but, you know, we, we've, we've tried to yell at Kristoff for not studying well, and he still gets We can't hold her. Too much on her. Now, everything I'm printing with right now is PLA. Um, and I believe it does a couple of a couple of layers of the multiple colors before it just shoots gray. But these are standard Prusa settings. And what I'm using is um, so, so here's the rundown. This is a bare um, extruder. So it's a modified extruder. So this is not the typical Prusa Mark III extruder. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now, if I'm cold, I definitely can't poke. No, you're good, sis. You're good. You need to take a break. I understand that. Um, I understand that. Th this is, believe it or not, a great break for me today because I get to talk and geek out for, I've been in meetings all, well, let me rephrase it. I've been in training all day for my company and a lot of conscious culture stuff. And then right after that, um we had our agile coaching session where we're developing our strategy which is a lot of fun as well so th yeah this i need this speaking of things i need pull apart, pull apart. The next one go. Cedar Craft. Um, 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 um. Help me out, chat. Where was I? I just brain farted. Um, so I'm just running PLA right now. Eventually I will try pet G and then work my way from there. I am looking at getting additional multi-material units up and running. Um, you know, this once again is a Prusa MMU. This runs Marlin. Um, this is running Actually, this whole setup, even though it's a Byzetic um, based Prusa Mark III bare build, um, it still has the standard 9C board in it. Um, 
It's running um, 3.10.1. Um, because this is a bare extruder running the bare X-frame, if I run the Prusa firmware, it will fail Z calibration because the bare EXA is six millimeters shorter than the Prusa hot end or the Prusa hot end extruder setup, which means it has six millimeters more travel distance. So it will fail the, the Z calibration portion of the calibration. Now, what you can do is you get everything assembled, you can run the Z calibration. And then you can load up the new version of firmware, whether that's 3.11 or 3.12. Currently at 3.12.1. Um, I had initially tried to put in 3.11 on this. I actually think I'm a little low. Um, and with 311, they introduced a uh, updated thermal model for both the heat bed and the um, E3DB6, which is a standard or a hot end for a Prusa. And they, they had known issues with the Revo. Um, supposedly in 312.1, that is resolved. Um, but I just haven't updated it yet, so it beeps at me every time. Oh, really? Oh, that would be awesome, Westry. Yeah, because if you could, if you can give them a fenced-in area where you can just basically open the door and let them go without having to take them out and watch them. I mean, this means you'll have to give me a bath more often because you'll probably go outside and roll around and get all dirty. But all good. You know, I have never had AT&T um, for internet service. I did have them for phone service several years ago. Um, I only have Windstream out here. And it wound up that I just recently got a, a brand new wireless router. And that has helped my um, bandwidth for the streaming channel because it's got... One 2.4 um, channel and two different 5G channels. And so a lot of my stuff, like the majority of my Raspberry Pi stuff, so my 3D printers, any of my uh, IoT devices, like my smart, um, smart outlets, um, only connect to the 2.4 nodes so that would always get oversaturated and so all of that stuff is pretty much on 2.4 um my work computer my wife's stuff our cell phones are pretty much on 5g channel and then my streaming system is on the five for the second 5g channel so there's like two things on it at any given time so it gets full bandwidth. So that's helped, I think, with my streams a lot, unless I'm having weather and it really messes with the overall connectivity. Okay, Royal Nobi. Sounds good. So yeah, um, it's... Will it change? No, we're still, I think we're still in the gray. No, I think we must have switched over to black. And nope, we're still on gray. Gray's got the move. Oh, 
But in a second, we'll probably go over, we'll, we're almost done with the first layer of the gray. It'll go over and do the switch, because like I said, I believe it's a couple of layers of the color. Yeah, there you go, Westry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's, hey, Robic, how are you doing? Thanks for joining. Um, so, yeah, we've just been chatting a bit. Um, we've got a multicolor print going on down here, and I've just been chatting about the MMU and the few things I've had to work on to get a successful print. And we did get a successful print. This, um, this guy and Gal Gnome, we got both of them. So let me see if I can't get them side by side here on the camera. These are the Flexi Factory Gnomes in Easter Regalia. And together, these two took just about 28 hours with all the filament changes. Um, I'm going to have to basically re-slice. Um, these are standard Prusa um, 0.2 layer height quality setting, right? Um, just with the, you know, using the MMU profile with no other changes. And everything printed beautifully. The tips that I'm getting are awesome. I'm getting no stringing. And I have heard a lot of people say that that's one of the things with the Revo hot ends, because this is running a Revo 6, is that they get really, really good tips out of it, just bang on default um, with the MMU units. Um, but I am, just noticed the blip out there, so maybe I did. I drop packet? I guess I am dropping a few frames here and there. Hopefully, it, it did, I'm not going to stream too long. Unfortunately, the last Sunday stream, I streamed, I think, for like six hours, and it wound up breaking into 13 different videos because I had some internet issues that day. And I have the full six hour long single, you know, front to back, end to end recording from OBS, but it's 21 gig. And um, Twitch will only let you upload 20 gig. So I'm going to have to go in and do something to modify that file to drop the size. Um, even if it's uh, re, you know, run it through handbrake at a, a slightly lower resolution um, to make that happen. But yeah, we we had a very good successful print. Um, like I said, I, I after I got the blob from hell and then fixed the lanes. So yeah, Rob Inc. When you wake up in the morning and your Prusa is making weird sounds and you have a blob like this and there's nothing else on your build plate, kind of a bit scary and disconcerting. Um, so I got that fixed and went through and did some tuning based off of a video by Chris Riley on how to get into the secret menu of the MMU and setting the actual distance for each lane calibrating that distance for each lane. Once I got that squared away, I started off the gnome prints again. And after it printed flawlessly for like 18 hours, I decided I could go to bed. And I did wake up in the middle of the night, kind of had that little bit of panic. So I came running up here and checking it out. And Oh yeah, yeah. There is a re there, there's a repaired Prusa Mini that might get auctioned off. You never know. Um. But yeah, I mean that it's it's working great, and I haven't had any issues on that 
on the nodes, that was roughly 28 hours of printing. And the um, statistics off of the Prusa itself said there was three load issues and they self-resolved without any intervention. Because once I hit print, I didn't touch this the entire time. And I sat here all day yesterday working. I sat here all day today working right next to it. And it never missed a beat. So, I mean, with the um, just running, when I say 10, 10 13 1 is the firmware on the Prusa itself for the INC board. And then it's 1.0.6, you know, underscore whatever for the MMU. So it's running the latest for the MMU. Um, I didn't update this to the 12.1 yet, which is supposed to have a better thermal model that will prevent the thermal runaway shutdowns when you use a Revo 6. And I am using uh, Prusa Slicer 2.6.0. Alpha 5 is the version we're on now, is Alpha 5. Yeah, 2.6.0 Alpha 5. Um, and so now it's doing a filament change, so just suck the gray out. It was the gray. Now, yep, it was the gray. Now it's coming back over to lane one, which is the blue. So it'll do a second layer of the MMU 2S down here in the little X. I think that was the second layer. It's going to do a third layer of the blue. Then it'll purge again. It'll retract the blue. Go to the black and do the original Prusa again and then start doing the gray again. So all in all, it's printing well. I haven't had too many errors. Actually, I haven't had any errors past that first one. And the knockoff RMU that I printed out, um, this has worked really well. I think this top is... Um, yeah, that top is a PET-G, so the whole body's PET-G, but the, um, the wheels that are inside, the, the large bearing wheels that make up the buffer system, um, are actually printed in ABS. So, but yeah. That, that's it. That's the setup, and everything's been working great so far. And I will tell you that I am actually, while I got this up, let me just break in stats on this particular. So the the overall cost of this print is going to be like a dollar nineteen. The object being a dollar twelve, and the white tower being yeah, each set. Like that. And it's going to do 12 total tool changes for this print because the, the words are just a couple of layers and then the rest is going to be the gray. Um, there's a lot more tool changes on the other one, the uh, gnomes, but I'll have to reslice that to get the number of tool changes. Um, so in this case, you could do this particular one doing manual layer changes, especially if you had the, the letters as separate files, and so you can line them up and do like the original Prusa, one layer black, and then the other parts, or all of it, one layer black, and then just do everything else the gray. I mean, that is, that is a valid option. That's the way a lot of people did it back in the day. Um, and that still works for a lot of those things where it's really just a layer or so. You could sit here and do manual 
um, filament changes without that much, but it's the, it's the nice factor of having it automated and not having to mess with it. Just hit print and go. Um, you can print, there is a setting in the slicer to basically print single color, in which case you would tell it which color to use and it would just use that one color for the whole print. So if this is my only printer, it's not like I have to disconnect the MMU to actually do just a single color print. I can still just run select which lane that has the color I want. Um, I am looking at other multi-material options. Um, I have been interested in the 3D Chameleon, which is a 4N, um, one out type solution. It uses two motors and basically a sensor. You either trip the sensor with your extruder body or with the bed, and it's all GCO driven. So you'll run a, um, you'll basically run a set of GCO macros that gets inserted into your uh, G code as it's sliced for tool change. And Based on the number of long and short presses, it tells it how to switch to the different, the four different colors. And you can daisy chain them, I think get up to 16 colors if I remember right. But it gets kind of unwieldy at that point. But it's, it's actually like a four in one stack that mounts right to the top of your extruder. And he's mounted it on Prusa Mark Threes, I believe an Ender, the Prusa Mini, and so forth. Yeah, there you go, built over bot. So you're aware of the 3D Chameleon. So I've been interested in that. Um, there's the Urkfa, of course. I may I may do one of those and throw it on one of the Oh, one of the ender wires. And there's another one that I am working on right now. I can't really talk about. Got selected for a closed beta of one, so I'm working on that. I think at this point, I have everything set up. I just need to figure out a mount, well, one, figure out which printer I'm going to use it on so I can figure out the best way to mount it and then do the wiring up on it. Um, but the nice thing is with that solution, I am, depending on which one I use, if I put it into the, um, I put it on the zero G, then I, I may be able to just plug everything that I need directly into the uh, Victory Tech Manta M8P. Um, if I don't, I do have an ERCFA Easy Board that I can use, which just basically adds a secondary board that controls just that, just like the MME has a secondary. Um, and then they basically both talk. Talk. I think zero. So yeah, I do want to try a couple of different MMUs out. I would like to probably get a solution that will work on my V0. And the nice thing about that is, is that I can multicolor. ABS prints fairly easy. Um, yeah, it's kind of some of the stuff that I have. Uh, on deck and also the other thing I want to talk about is we got some toys in. now all of this is from Big Tree Tech this is not in any way shape or form sponsored I did buy all this and what I have here are two Give me a 
a second, sister. Okay. So I've got two of the UTC boards. So this is uh, USB to CAN boards. Hey, Pete Slavis, how are you doing, my friend? So these are the um, USB to CAN bus boards. So I would have power in on this side. I would have USB that comes out and connects to the Raspberry Pi. And then I will have CAN bus. So it's a four pin connector. Um, it sends voltage. So 24 volts and then a high low signal to a tool head board. And those are the only four wires that have to go between the uh, controller and the tool head board. So on you know, the standard tool head right here, you've got a big set of wires and everything up here has a home wire run basically. Um, so what I plan to do for the zero G is this is the EBB 36. And so this is a tool head board. So this board will mount to the back of the extruder motor on the tool head and everything on the tool head will mount into the connectors. And this does have a 2209 for the, the extruder motor driver. And it also has its, a, uh, so the 2209 is over here. And then the bigger chip in the center is a, I believe it's a STEM32 chip. And so this acts as a separate controller. So the nice thing about that is it would free up another one of the drivers off of the mantle board, which means I could then have, I think, three drivers now free that I can use for an ERCFA or some other MMU solution on that. And then this is where those four pins would come in. And once again, two of them will be um, plus 24 volt and ground, and then the other two will be high low. Um, communications. So it sends digital signals over high low and then we're extending power to the board to run the board and everything is connected. In. Okay, so are you just trying to connect up your Manta E3 EZ on the bench top? just with the USB? Because if so, at least on my Mantas, um, when you're powering the board from USB, there's a jumper on the board to tell it you're powering it with USB. And there should be another jumper for boot. Yeah, so I have this one because this will mount to the back of the round motor that's on my orbiter. And I need to double check because I want to also use the um, orbiter filament sensor. And if I can run that directly off this board as well, then that's even better. Once again, that means I have four wires that go to the tool head and that's it. Everything else is on the tool head. And this board also has a built-in ADXL on it. So I could do input shaping directly off this board with anything else. And it does come with all the requisite connectors and pens so that you can repin. So that is a project that's coming up. And I, I, I would still need this 
because I've got a version 1.0 of the Manta M8 P board. If you had the 1.1, it has CAN bus capability on the board, so you wouldn't need to do it. You would just be able to extend CAN bus directly out, so you wouldn't need the secondary board. Right. So there's that. And then the other two boxes is just another UTC, so that's, that's nothing stellar there. Other box and I like that this one for whatever reason comes with rubber ducky. So get the rubber ducky. And once again we get all the pins necessary that we would need to plug into the board. But the board out the packaging. It's crazy, it's crazy this year. This CAN bus board or set of boards may look very familiar. So this is a new set of CAN bus boards that they are marketing for the stealth brand. So once again, um, you have your butter connector, your USB-C for initially setting it up, um, your CAN bus, I believe these are the two for your LED lights, extending that. And then you've got your, yeah, 2209 is right here on the back. This is for the motor, so I'll run your extruder motor. Your main chip right there in the middle. Then you also have the accelerometer right here. So what this will do is this mounts to the side of your extruder body. And this other board will be able to plug in from the front. So this board mounts on your fans, right? Behind your 50, 15 fan. So this is the tool head uh, mount for a stealth burner. That's CAN bus based. And the nice thing about this one is that it comes with the CAN bus cable already as part of the deal. So I did pick these up. Um, I do not know if I'm going to retrofit this onto, say, Red Dragon or if I'm going to leave Red Dragon the way it is and possibly do a the toy around with the idea of redoing uh, Black Dragon, which is our Ender 3 over here. And I am seriously, seriously contemplating um, running another set of parts like I'm doing for, for Cedarcraft and rebuilding the OG Ender as a uh, switch wire. But as you can see, it's pre made cable with the funky connector. So these two right here are your, are your 24 volt. And then the smaller two on the side are the high and low. And you've got your Three done wires for high low, and then add barrels to these. And the uh, UTC. So yeah, a couple more upgrades that we've got on the bench that we can use. Like I said, the 
The EBB 36 is definitely destined for the zero G build. Yeah, the the um, big tree tech can bus boards. You, you just have to really be dip, or be careful because. Um, I, I've listened to people talk about frying their, you know, one side or the other, either the UTC or the other side, because they reverse the polarities. Because people would assume that the that the plug for both boards would be the same, and they're not. The polarities are oftentimes rolled on them. For whatever reason, I don't know. I don't know if that's a CAN bus standard or what have you, but you really, really have to pay attention and be careful and you know, potentially continuity check things before even applying power to make sure that you have it wired up right. Hey, Royal Nami, glad that you're back. Um, we haven't made it too far. Um, I think we are... Uh, at point eight, so we're on like the fourth layer. So pretty soon we're gonna go right into straight black and we'll stop doing all the element changes. But I wanna say this is a, what, this is a four hour print. So I'm not gonna stay on all night to wait for this print to finish. But I just wanted to chat and I wanted to show you that this is functioning, that it is working well. I haven't had any errors with it once I did the, uh, I'll say the lane length calibration. We just talked about some new toys that I got in from Big Tree Tech. Um, they were toys that I purchased of my own accord. Um, and we'll go on various printers that I have around here as we, as we move forward in the future. So the plan definitely is to uh, had some CAN bus tool boards, as well as um, doing other types of MMU units. You're doing oh, so you're you're painting the transformer. Now, is that one that you basically assemble and then paint the various parts, or are you painting? You're just basically printing all the parts out in like gray and then painting them before you assemble. Three. Yeah, the, the duet lines of boards are, well, they're very good boards, right? Um, they've been there forever and a day, been around for quite a while. I've never personally used one. Um, my good friend Evil Diesel um, does have one and had used it on his Delta. And that was, that was interesting. It's Clipper has a very similar user interface. Um, they, they do have different terminologies for different things and some of the calculations for like rotation distance are a little different, but nothing real major. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna do one more purge run. To do the, uh, the letters again. Once it goes to just gray, it's it's gonna should be able to rock and roll. Okay, you're printing everything out in gray and then pink. Yeah, and gray's a good color because it'll work good as a as a base for um, you know lighter or darker colors. Because normally they say like if you're gonna be doing 
a light color. Like if you're painting something white, you want to use like a dark gray primer. But if you're going to be printing some, you know, painting something dark, you want to use like a light gray or a white based primer because it's easier to tell how much coverage you have and if you have any uh, lighter spots when you're doing that painting. That works well if you're airbrushing or you know actually doing with paint gun. This is hand relics or something. So. That's all we got tonight. Um, I didn't have a lot going on tonight. Um, I am going to test out. So I have only done lane calibration on three lanes. As I mentioned, I do have a fourth lane loaded up right now, which is this um, white PLA silk. I think it's like Sunlu or Nissan. It's one of those. It's this. Made in China, PLA silk white. Um, but my best friend back in Colorado, he's actually the best man at my wedding, um, called me last night and his daughter really liked the dragons that I sent. I sent one of them the gold MacGyver dragon and the other one was the, um, Oh, the dark red um, rose dragon, center wing rose dragon. And they really liked both of those dragons. So she called me up and asked if she could pay for another one. And so I, I gave her, I, I'll, I'll say I will. She's my best friend, daughter. And she's cute. So um, I was a sucker. What can I say? And so I'm going to print her a, she wanted like a, a shiny white. So I'm going to use the silk PLA for that versus standard white at the machine to it. I'm going to, I'm going to run that through here. Uh, I'm going to just have to re-slice it as a um, single color print through the end. which means now it's going to pull the black. Like I said, um, so the tubes in back are the tubes that came with the bisect kit. So these are, um, you know, they kind of look like cap tubes, but they are definitely not cap tubes from the feel of them. You know, they're standard PTFE, but they're an opaque blue. Um, they're probably a two millimeter inside diameter, which is fine. This front tube that are, that's running from the MMU down to the actual tool head is a clear three millimeter inside diameter, four millimeter outside diameter PTFE tube. And for whatever reason, I've, I don't know, I guess I forgot that I bought some, but I bought like Three packages of 25 feet, so I've got like 70 feet of PTFE tube. It's three three millimeters diameter. So yeah, like I said, I'll be doing other MMUs down that I can use some of that. But yeah, I've been real happy with this. It's printing really nicely. Um, once this is done, because like I said, this is a four-hour print, I will post pictures of it up on Twitter. And at some point, I'm going to have to get my own Discord channel going. But otherwise, I'll just keep uh, pulling her Discord.
So Westry, have you been able to solidify any of your plans or at least knock out any of the options for your travel plans? Oh, is that Jay Breaker I see in here trolling? I didn't see anything. This thing or so I am sorry. Go around and just say uh, hi to everybody that's sitting in and working in chat. So we have digital instinct, drop snap, Lisa Bay, Jay Breaker, Ita, Pete Savas. Boondog, Bob Inc., the famous Royal Nomi, Silverback Creations, Spinning Moon, Steve 3D, Stephen Poole, Stream Far, and Westry One. Thank you all for coming out and hanging out with me as we played with the MMU. I know that this is basically. It's just like anything else. Um, it's either works great or you have a never ending set of troubles with it. And I think a lot of it is just figuring out how to tune in the MMU. And like I said, at, at first I was having all kinds of weird anomalies. And as soon as I was looking for tips and tricks and came across Chris Riley's videos, Chris Riley is uh, Chris's basement on YouTube. Um, and as soon as I saw a couple of his videos on MMU tricks, I mean, that, that was golden. In fact, the one thing I may do for this unit is right now we have the PTFE tubes that get jammed in the back and then clamped down. Um, there's a mod that would basically put the uh, same uh, PTFE coupler fittings the pass-through fittings on the back. Um, so I may go ahead and do that just because when I'm working on this, it's really a pain in the butt because I have to open this up to try and mess with the filament. And it would be a lot easier to be able to just detach from the back, pull the filament out right here and work with it rather than having to mess around in the MMU or the, uh, the buffer system. And these are... I mean, they're not bad, but they're probably a little tighter than they should be. So I probably need to make these a little bit longer. So what I may do is take these and swap them out for lengths that are a little bit longer. And then take these and relocate them over on the side for when I, I'm making the run down to the rep box underneath the bench. Um, I think that'll work out a little bit nicer. See. Yeah, so your your trip to LA in April's not going off. Um, but yeah, if you're heading down anywhere in this vicinity or not this vicinity, but this direction, let me know. And even if it's not directly down into North Carolina or the Raleigh area, um, I can definitely meet you somewhere along the line and get you your your printer um if not uh or if further plans get canceled just let me know because like i said uh, mrs dragon has been on me to do something that just gets us out of sanford and yeah just out of sanford like this weekend, she was like, oh, let's go down to Southern Pines to eat. Which <laughs> is like a 45 minute drive just to go eat. It's not a bad thing, but I know she wants to take a vacation and get out of here. Take a trip that's not just to go and take care of a family member, something like that. So if you're coming down this way, great. We can either host you here at the house or we can Meet you somewhere along your travel route, or if not, maybe we'll make a trip up to 
your direction. I'll have to work it out. Stephen Poole is lurking and, and working on his um, Mecha Godzilla, I believe. Putting that together, or not the Godzilla, the Mecha Kong. I believe that was the Mecha Kong. He's doing the assembly of his Kong. And I, I look at that and it's, it's amazing, but it's also a huge number of parts and stuff. To Normally when I do long, big prints like that, that take days to print, it's parts for printers and not, not big things. But I have looked at that. I've looked at a couple of Gundams that would be big. Um, I do want to do one of, I do want to do a larger project like that at some point. I just need to make sure I either, it's either I'm printing it for somebody or I have the space to to put it somewhere in my office before I do it. Yeah, well, I don't think I'm going to stream too much longer. Um, we kind of got a late start to the evening and Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's starting to go through and do all the gray layers now. So there won't be any more color changes on this particular print. Once again, I think I've got it dialed in fairly good. I'm getting good tips after it does its purge when it does the retraction. The results are coming out really good. Now I just need to find various things that I can print and luckily, my good friend Flexi Factory has a lot of his files now pre done for multi material. So he's starting to release these in standard and then multicolored prints. So I'll be able to print off a few more of these. They take a lot longer, but I think those results are one of the things I wanted to add to my arsenal is the ability to print multicolor and especially when it comes to things like doing dragons you know, yeah doing a, a layer change or a rainbow is cool but if you can print like accent pieces like the horns and stuff like that in, in a different color I think that'll add some to that look How far am I from Atlanta? Um, good question. Check real. So from here to Atlanta, six to seven hours depending on which which way i go well i mean that's pretty much all kind of like west yeah west southwest um for my location Yeah, like I said, it depends on which way I go um, if, and what time of day I go, but it'd be sit anywhere from six to seven and a half hours, depending on which route I take. Um, I mean, that's not bad. Yeah, we can definitely figure something out. We just need to keep chatting about it and come up with a good plan. 
five hours south of Atlanta. Are you down in Florida, Stephen Paul? Second, folks. Okay, I'm back home, but I was talking about stopping and bringing me a fresh cup of coffee. Which ran out. Fall down, send her a text to see if she'll bring. She's on the street listening. They're trying to plan a week away, and it's chaotic. Yeah. So right now, I'm. Um, they've had us put our uh, our, our uh, time off or our expected time off on the calendar through the rest of this quarter and next quarter. So of course, I have the time off listed for Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest, and between now and then, which is what the end of. April, like, I don't have anything planned yet. I kind of feel like I need to have something planned. I don't have anything planned yet. I will be going to Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Festival. Unfortunately, I won't be able to take any of the printers or stuff with me to that one just because I try and pack anything and ship it, fly in, deal with all that. But when I go to birth in June, I will be bringing a, a few printers with me. So they will bring in several printers. What you two? Oh, you're you're talking about uh, Rocky Mountain Rip Rap Fest? Yeah, I'm flying out on the twentieth, which is Thursday. We're going to go down to Colorado Springs on Friday and see my best man and his family, um, see my sons, and uh, probably have lunch or dinner with my work daughter, one of the girls that I used to work with, and then head back up to the Aurora area then head over to the shows Saturday and Sunday and then fly back on Monday. So yeah, that's going to be a long weekend. Come back from that and I'll be like, wow, I need like a week off so recover. Here that or I'll feel like, I don't know, daylight savings time. Hopefully... Hopefully they make a decision and they decide to stop changing all the time because that's getting old right. Getting old rather quick. It's like feeling like you're hung over without drinking. Oh really, what what the uh, part of Colorado Springs was for you, like north, south, east, west? Okay, you're, you and BC are driving in oil, Nomi? Good. What kind, how long of a drive is that for you guys from Texas? Oh, 
Oh man can't stay awake. Yeah. Yeah, I I feel you. I feel you. I did that trip up that round trip up to Crystal City, Virginia, and it wound up being about ten and a half hours on the road and I can't do those things anymore. I used to there's a couple of times where I drove like twenty three hours straight. I drove from Tucson, Arizona, almost all the way to Atlanta, Georgia, straight with, you know, just stopping for food and gas. Okay, up in Black Forest, so that would be the, the northern part of town. Yeah. Yeah, so Black Forest would be the north side of town, more up around the Air Force Academy. South side would be down by Fort Carson. East side would be, you know, you have the Air Force Academy and, or I'm sorry, east side is the Powers Corridor. You have Peterson on like the southeast side with Shriver, kind of central east. And then you have, um, the Air Force Academy on the north side and Cheyenne Mountain on the like southwest side. Oof, yeah. Like I said, I used to be able to do those long hauls and I just I can't anymore. Going back over to blue, I thought it was done doing color changes. Guess not. Like sitting here feeling like, okay, is it going to start pulling? But I keep forgetting I've got the whole little buffer system. And I'll tell you what, the nice thing is there's just a little bit that hangs out the bottom of this buffer. So this buffer is pretty right sized. Now what I do need is to find a different mount or make up a new mount for the back so that it, because it is kind of bleeding at a bit of an angle, but it obviously doesn't affect the operation. Yeah, we'll Oh, okay. So w when you flew in, did you fly into Denver or did you fly into Colorado Springs? You got to print her a dragon? Okay. What kind of dragon are you going to print her? Oh, yeah. Garden of the Gods is gorgeous. It, it, is, it is beautiful. I said, my only problem is my body does not like altitude anymore. And last time I was out there, I was out there for a week. And I was within like 12 hours of getting on the plane and coming home and wound up in the hospital. Flew back a couple of days. So I, I'm down to like the, the long weekend, like the four day trip and hopefully there's no um, fires going on at the moment, but if there is, I may be wearing a mask just because of the fires. You know, I, I've yet to be to Edelweiss. Um, my boys have gone there. Who knows, maybe that's where I'll go eat while I'm there this next time. But, I love, I spent six years in Germany, love the food. And my boys say that Edelweiss is really good, so I've definitely got to go and try it. She wants a big four-legged non-snaky one. Okay. Yep, yep. You can ride horses through Garden of the Gods. Um, yeah. Yeah, I spent uh, about seven years. 
about seven years, uh, seven, eight years in Colorado Springs. And I said, Jen, or, uh, Mr. Agon grew up in the Denver area, outside Denver, Aurora. He used to drive up there all the time to your Yeah, so that Denver area, the elevation there is around 6,200 feet. So just be aware that when you get there, you may be a little short of breath. We'll probably get tired a little bit quicker. Um, so hopefully, um, like at the show Saturday and Sunday, they've got plenty of places that people can sit down in. Because yeah, people are coming like where I'm at. I'm like I think we're at like 200 feet above sea level. So yeah, going back there, it does feel a little bit harder to breathe just because of the higher elevation, the air thinner. It's even worse. My parents came out and were visiting. It's the first time they came out and visited when I moved to Colorado Springs with the kids. And we took them up to Pikes Peak. And so you're 14,000 plus feet. And we got out of the car and my mom almost fell over. We had to walk her inside, sit her down and get her some oxygen and some water. They have a great donut shop up on the top of Pikes Peak, by the way. Yeah, flying out to LA. Okay. Yeah, Denver's not a bad place to have a long layover. I hate, hate with a passion, uh, having layovers in Chicago. In fact, I hate going through Chicago O'Hare. Period. It's nothing against Chicago. It's the airport. Every time I have had a, a stop in Chicago, I have missed my connecting is either the plane's late or it's, you know, I come in on one flight and the flight out's like the completely opposite side of the airport and the trams are down at that time for whatever reason. And it's just, I, I've never gotten cleanly in and out of Chicago. I hate that airport. Reaction. Yeah, like I said, this is going to continue to print. In fact, I may stop the print early just because I really don't need another one of these panels. And if I do, it needs to be in that G or something other. Probably with other colors that would match the color schemes of my other. I just wanted to do this one as a good test print to show the multi and show that it is working and is doing the filter changes perfectly fine so yeah okay and with that i am seeing that i've got a about a 20 second delay going on so there is a pretty good delay on this and i have dropped quite a few number of frames hopefully i haven't dropped too bad or dropped out you know froze too much screen I am going to start looking at a place to jump out to. I see, yeah, I, yeah, I had at least one break on the, uh, the actual previous. Quit it. So. And see who's on and see who we have or have not rated recently. And you know what? I see subsector on. We haven't rated in a subsector in a long time. And she was one of the ones that got me started and hounded on me and kept, uh, I want to say hounded on me, but kept keying up that 
I haven't started streaming yet, but I'm going to. I'm going to. And her and Westry really uh, held me accountable to getting the stream going and getting off the ground. So looks like uh, I think we're going to raid into Westry or should we raid into Subsector this evening? I'm not sure what all she's. There's, uh, oh, she's got another Kairu Slim that she was unboxing, and she's got a Focus printer that she's going to do a giveaway for. Not sure uh, if she's done any giveaway yet or not, but let's uh, let's go ahead and raid in to Subsector and see what she's up to. Um, I'm sure that everybody has probably been dual if watching her anyhow but uh let's let's jump over there and check in on her and with that um i'm gonna get the rate going like i said i may not let this print fully i may just go ahead and stop it here soon and flip it over and take a picture so that we can see what a a multicolor LCD would look like um, with the different words, or maybe eh, maybe I will let it still go. It's going to be a different color scheme than what the printer is currently set up with, but we can still let it go and either pop it on or just use it as a display piece for now. I will try and figure out what colors I would want to use and look at doing it in Pet G um, or a different one. May look at because on the bare frame, I may actually look at doing it a little bit different and actually having the the actual printer name like Purple Haze up in the uh, up on the top above the screen. You never know. But yep, let's go over and raid subsector and come join me as we raid over. Here are some of the loving. And support that you've shown me uh, over the last couple of hours here on stream and we will see you all again on Saturday you need to go and adjust the schedule on Twitch but we will be doing this again Saturday morning 10 o'clock Eastern time and between now and then I got to figure out which project we're going to start on next um, or maybe we have a, a print going on this again we will see but thank you all for hanging out with me and we will talk again on saturday have a good one join me as we rain over to subsector and we will uh have another stream on saturday thanks for joining and we'll get one Cow, 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 cow.